Welcome back, woodworkers. So today we're talking about finishing, and most of, uh, well, one of the more important things about finishing is how we're going to apply the finish. Just a couple of different methods. Today we're going to talk about, you guessed it, brushes. So, um, all right, so brushes. Uh, there are not all created equal. There are things that are good and better and best depending on the finish you're, you're trying to apply. So a couple things to note. <clears throat> this brush here is uh, great for a more durable application processes. So uh, this with a plastic handle is usually a sign that it is not a fairly high quality bristle. And this would be fantastic for restaining a deck or applying paint, exterior, something along those lines. For applying wood finishes, not ideal. The other thing about this brush that you'll notice is that it has this flat um, end of where the bristles terminate here. And when applying finish on a board, you're basically dragging the corner on the bristle uh, of the brush uh, and kind of distributing that uh, material unevenly. So this one is not great for final working applications and um, usually the cost associated with these things as well is, is a marker of, of some quality as well. Uh, so getting rid of that. Going down the line of other options, uh, I have two examples of what are disposable brushes or chip brushes. Uh, these things are okay, they serve a purpose, but they're not fantastic with respect to the bristle quality. Um, these ones have been beaten up and I, I forget what I do with these. Obviously, I do some painting with these, uh, a lot of application of milk paint and other things. And for that, I really don't need a high quality brush. I just need something that I can broadcast over the surface. Things with bristle brushes, pardon me, with chip brushes, are that you need to condition them right out of the bag. So getting this thing out of the bag, removing the covering, uh, with the decreased in quality of your brush, there's also a decrease in how the bristles are held into this little metal wrap that holds the handle. Uh, so just need to be cautious about that. What I would hate to have happen is getting out whenever my finished material is applying this here and then seeing one of the bristles or several of the bristles left behind then i have to deal with that i have to pull it out which means i'm going to affect the surface or if i leave it then i'm definitely going to have to start doing some some abrading or some removal or flattening of that material and starting over so if you are going to use a bristle brush i would recommend that you kind of gently but uh, and intentionally kind of pull this apart to make sure there's no loose bristles before you start getting into your uh, application of the material. Uh, these are super cheap. This one I think is probably a buck, give or take, and they have wider and narrower ones than these. Uh, but that's why people buy them. They're really inexpensive, they're disposable, you can go from there. Uh, these ones, as I think you can see, I've had around for a while and for the applications, these work well. Um, okay, uh, non going up the food chain a little bit, uh, a non solvent based finish will lend itself well to doing uh, application with a foam brush like this. So instead of individual bristles, we've got this foam, dipping this into our finishing material, we'll start to absorb that. You'll notice this, this fine point here on this ridge. And so when we apply this finish, it has more of that uh, triangular shape or this broad surface to apply the finish. So it starts to distribute a little bit more evenly. Uh, and these are super cheap. They're on par with the chip brushes, probably a little bit more expensive, or maybe that's not true. I have no idea. I, I usually buy these things in a pack of 10 or something like that. But, um, but all right, so... If it's a solvent-based finish, um, lacquer, which is not a great finish for brushing anyway, um, but the solvent in lacquer, uh, solvent in um, some type of a polyurethane or an oil application, mineral spirits, will start to absorb into the structure of this. And then the tang, the area that is holding that foam together, this little plastic 
thing that gives it structure. Uh, it will start to release the adhesive that this thing is holding on to and then dipping this into your, your finish, bring it over to your workpiece, back and forth, back and forth. You'll find that this is just going to fall off into your material or somewhere along the way, hopefully not on top of your workpiece. Uh, but these are not intended for solvents because they just, the adhesives, as I said, can't hold up to um, that, that reaction. So uh, I use these a lot when I need to apply water-based finishes uh, because there's no solvent or there's very little solvents there and it helps to lay out really beautifully and distribute that finish very very well so i like these for that um outside of that there's they don't get a, or they don't get a lot of use there's not a lot of purpose for these all right um i'm holding well i'm holding two examples here of something called a uh, china brush both two inch brushes so width here, width here. Uh, you can tell this one's a little bit different. It has an angle uh, to the ends of these things. Uh, the China usually suggests, not all the time anymore, but historically would recommend that these were made out of a synthetic bristle material. And so um, historically these would be made out of um, animal uh, fur. So little, little creatures that usually cause all kinds of damage and destruction if you live out in the country, depending where you live, I don't know. Anyway, uh, badgers, um, uh, rabbit hair, I think is also something that was traditionally used. Squirrel sometimes, but hog brush, uh, bristles are another option, but uh, usually a bit more coarse. Badgers are kind of the, the perfect um, storm of, uh, of length as well as uh, texture. So it's, it's a really soft brush in theory. So anyway, these, the China ones, are synthetic material. So these are not great for using with a solvent-based finish. So uh, what happens with these, if you dip this into uh, lacquer, again, uh, not a great finish for, um, for brushing on. Polyurethane, shellac sometimes, those solvents will start to do things to the, um, uh, to the, the bristles and they start to swell and they start to make a really uh, jagged application of finish here. So uh, these are traditionally for um, water-based finishes as well. So these ones will work great. Um, that's your choice as far as how these things are used. Uh, you can use them for a solvent-based finish, just buyer beware. It's not going to lay down as easily or as smoothly um, consistently with what your uh, assume your intended outcome is going to be so uh, these are much but uh, much less expensive than your natural bristle brushes so buyer beware with these things um, and you can get these any all kinds of sizes the angle tip and not um, so those ones and then lastly kind of leading up to what these things are these are made out of natural bristles and so uh, this is, yeah, this one is an old artist brush that I've had forever and ever and ever. And I used these on canvas when I was doing oil paintings. And it's a good brush. It will uh, take well to the solvents and the finishes that I mentioned. And it'll start to lay down this fairly well. The thing I don't love about this, and it has that similar structure where the ends of the bristle is kind of cutting at 90 degrees. It gently rounds a little bit, uh, and I think that's how it was designed. I don't think it's because of years of use, but I would not want to go for that structure, which you can see a little bit more clearly on this guy. Uh, it's a little bit more straight across. This one rounds just a little bit more, but um, anyway, this one is good because it'll deal with the solvent. It's not great for the shape for what it is I need to do. This is great for painting, but for applying finishing applications for woodworking, uh, this is an old badger hairbrush and uh, natural fibers. And then it does have that taper situation that was much more akin to more of what we saw in the foam brush. So this one, I can lay this thing down and it holds a lot of material because of the, uh, the nature of natural bristles. They start to absorb a lot more of that that material and, and laying these things down. So uh, with, with all of these, 
it's important to care for these things properly. When you start with these things, it's always a good idea to kind of work them around a little bit. I always dip them into the appropriate solvent first and then shake it off, brush this thing off, usually on some type of a table, table leg or something, and then I pull on my material. Um, over time, what happens is if I put this brush into a finishing container, something called capillary action will pull that finished material up into this area where the bristles are being bound. And over time, cleaning those becomes harder and harder to do because they're really captured. So um, a lot of times people, if they're hoping to keep a brush, will run into this problem and they'll have a brush that's super stiff. And so it can't be used anymore. There are, um, there are, all, are some, some solutions for that, some solvents. I'm holding a container here of something I've got at an art supply store, and um, it's a, a chemical uh, that is very subtle. Mix a little bit of this with water, and there's a bunch of different vari uh, varieties of this or versions. And then you soak this or leave it in a container for 24, 48 hours, whatever the instructions guide you to. And then afterwards, you'll uh, wash this thing out, and then these things are very, very malleable, very soft again. So there is life in these brushes. Do not be tempted to throw them away um, if, if these are important brushes to you. So general cost differences. We talked about the low end. These are around a buck. Foam brushes, now that I think about it, probably a little bit less than that individually, but that's on the far end. And working your way up through the brushes that we talked about, when I purchased this one a million years ago, uh, this one was about 45 bucks for a good natural bristle brush, and um, and it's served me well. Uh, I have found that it's getting a little bit stiffer in this area, so I have had to treat it with something like this, and then it's worked great. Uh, what I'm really looking for is a, a, a general softness for when I get the material, I don't have to push terribly hard. I can have a really light touch or holding away from, uh, from the bristles, a really light touch and just broadcast that material and let it do its thing. Uh, and if this is stiff, it, you kind of create some deep scratches and gouges into the material and not so much the wood, but you, um, you, you cut little grooves into where that finish is going to cure. So anyway, soft brushes are the best. Uh, and it has to be appropriate to applications. So, as we said, sol things with solvents, we'd use the natural bristles. Things that are water-based, we would use a synthetic bristle. And um, there are other shapes. I wanted to point this one out as well. This one is based on the, uh, the natural bristle thing. And uh, you tell this one has a really pronounced contour. This is not great for large areas, but if I wanted to do the edge of a surface, this is a much better choice. If I were to apply finish with just the edge, it would be done horizontally and ideally facing me. But, um, but if I do this, I'm just gonna get so much overflow with this and I'm gonna have these drips and sags. So something like this, I can really fine tune where that goes. And so having a couple of brushes, even for the same, application uh, or the same piece uh, is super important so anyway hopefully this was helpful uh, talked about the variety of these things and um, and then you're ready for next step which is going to be preparing finishes so all right catch you later thanks everyone